Okay, so um, if we have if we have a case where the potential um, the potential energy u goes to infinity, okay, so um, uh, sort of a classical way of thinking of that is if we have a wall that the particle can't, can't penetrate through, okay. Um, so uh, the way that we would draw that is that as a function of x here, if we draw the energy, on, if this is the energy uh, axis and this is the, the spatial axis x, if we have some sort of region, some sort of wall, and we let that the potential energy of that wall uh, go to infinity, that means that um, the particle can't penetrate that wall. So its, it's uh, wave function must be zero there because the square of the wave function, the probability density must be zero there. Okay, And in that case, the, um, the, uh, the derivative of the wave function doesn't have to be continuous. Okay, It can be discontinuous um, and it's, it's, everything's okay. It's a useful concept. This is never true in, in, print, in practice. You never have an infinitely high potential barrier. Okay, But um, it's a useful con uh, concept and it, in fact is not even all that unphysical because you can imagine having a barrier which is a potential energy barrier which is very high compared to the total energy of your particle. And in this case what we would find is um, is if we drew the wave function now if we basically use this energy this is the total energy this dotted line here represents the total energy of the particle. Okay, so it's p squared over 2m plus uh, the potential energy. It's a kinetic energy plus potential energy, and it's constant, right? That's that's what we've shown. Is that's what we've discussed is that the that the total energy, the total mechanical energy of a particle, is constant. Okay, if it's in a conservative field. So if the if the potential energy is zero here and is infinite here. Okay, then we can write a, we can draw a, way, a generic wave function. We'd have some sinusoidally varying function. I'm just drawing the real part, okay, at some particular time. So this is just the spatial part of the wave function um, at some particular time, and just the real part of that. And I've basically drawn it on uh, using this uh, uh, this total energy axis, um, sort of as the zero uh, axis. For the wave function, for the wave function. So I'm plotting the wave function now in red. I'm plotting the wave function as the vertical along uh, the amplitude of the wave function is plotted is corresponds to the vertical direction, and um, and I'm just drawing it somehow at uh, the zero amplitude. I'm drawing the zero amplitude part of the wave function to correspond with this and uh, this uh, total energy um, line. Now. All I'm doing is combining two graphs. I should be drawing these graphs separately, but this is a very useful way of representing wave functions. And I'm showing this to you now because we'll do this over and over again, where you draw the wave function superimposed on the energy. And of course, <laughs> that means that implies that you have two separate vertical axes here. So you're overlaying two graphs that have distinct vertical axes. Um, but it's useful because we can then draw them on the same uh, spatial, uh, that is x-axis. Okay, so in this case we have our sinusoidal varying wave function in this in this region, and then the the wave function must have identically zero uh, amplitude in this region because it's classically forbidden. Again, this is an infinitely high potential. Okay, and you can see that this that the derivative of the wave function is not continuous at the boundary of this um, infinite potential. Um, it's got this slope here, and then it all of a sudden goes to zero, and again. This is only at those, only at these places, at the boundary between a, 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 a infinite potential uh, energy boundary, can you allow? Are, are we okay with the uh, the um, slope of the wave function being discontinuous? Okay. So now, if what we what we want to do is actually we have this um, uh, we have this wave function. Um, we have the, the um, this wave equation, and we have uh, a wave function which is has both uh, spatial and time parts. Um, te uh, so there's some spatial part and some temporal part of the wave function. Okay, and what we're going to do now is, uh, for certain circumstances, we can actually separate the space and time parts, and that uh, allows us to arrive at a time-independent. Schrodinger equation.